a perfect circle. Ooh, Ooh. nice. <laughs> Who wants to go first on this one? I'll lead off. I, I got lead off? several thoughts. So you, we're you talking, of Sweet. course, about the uh, the first album, Mare de Noms, the second album, 13th Step, and yes. then they tripped on their 14th step and put out Emotive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I... I we both, we all, I think, love uh, Mare de Noms. We've all spent a ton of time with that. That came out 20 years ago last year, right? And that, that just had a 20-year milestone. Yep. Great record. Um, really cool going back and listening to that a couple times this year. And then 13th Step, I loved it. In the moment when it came out, listened to it a ton. A couple of really cool singles. And then, you know, just front-to-back albums. Both of those albums, you can't really touch them. They're just Perfect. You, you're not going to not, you're going to skip a song. You're going to listen to the whole thing from the front to the back. Emotive comes out and it's partially covers a couple of, um, a couple of songs that they had worked out with other bands. Maybe passive, I think is one of them. It's not bad. It's cool. It's a different Avenue for them, but it wasn't like those other two records. Like it, it, you're not going to put that on, listen to it straight through every time you might grab a song, you might grab passive. You might grab when the levy breaks, you might grab a few others, but you're not going to grab this and start at the beginning and listen all the way through. So there are some people that might be in the camp to say, hey, you know what? This is largely covers. It's not a full length. So if if this never existed and you went to uh, Eat the Elephant, would e- I think the run still ends, right? Eat the Elephant yeah, doesn't definitely. get there either. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. We're on the same page then. I like Emotive more than Eat the Elephant. Uh, and mm. I need to give Eat the Elephant another another try. But yeah, I, Emotive had some different things on there that were for me, but Eat the Elephant, not so much. Yeah, it's complicated. I mean, for this album, I think I think everyone, <laughs> that's a generalization, but I feel like everyone felt the same way about this album. It's like, it's a bunch of, there's a lot of covers on here. Those first two albums were so good, you know, just like masterpiece albums. So to go from this, where I mean, literally the first single was Imagine, which is obviously a cover of a John Lennon song. And the second single, Passive, uh, was actually a song, believe it or not, was a, a tapeworm song, Trent Reznor and Manor James Keen's side project that never came to fruition. So that was a song off that album. So he got permission to release that onto this to eventually have some light of the day for that project. And uh, they're both okay. And obviously, I imagine it's a timeless song. But the album overall, I remember hearing it for the first time being like, ah, oh, wow. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, you're like, shit, like... After 13th Step, like you think it would just lead into this natural like crescendo of amazing, powerful, immersive music. I mean, that's a, both those first two albums are a trip. And uh, I was just in Arizona and went to Maynard's Winery and they have a bunch of signed stuff and all this cool nerdery at the tasting room and, and the emotive stuff. It's like, you couldn't pay me to, to buy that stuff, but I'll buy the first two album stuff all day, you know, and Tool and his other projects too. But this album is just like, it's, it's uh. I hate to say a miss, but it, it it changes the the cadence of this timeless music, which is rough because everyone in this band is, you know, classically trained and Maynard's obviously his voice is just so so powerful. So um it sucks. It's a it's a roadblock and it sucks to say that. And I, I know this is all subjective, but um we're all in agreement that this is just not to the same caliber of those first two albums. Just kind of it hits like a screeching halt almost in a lot of ways. So I'm gonna bring up an idea that we or a discussion that we brought up in a previous episode which is is this a case where the band set such a high bar that they handicapped themselves in f- the future catalog and where what i mean by that is say a band came out so say perfect circle comes out their debut album is a motive and you're a big fan of tool what do you think of it what, what would you guys think of it would you think it would a dud or do you think the reason why this is a roadblock is because the first two albums are so good i would have probably thought Maynard is waiting for the guys in Tool to finish the instrumentals so we can get another Tool album. Here's an album, album of covers with some other musicians. <laughs> Just to throw together. It's, yeah, that's what I would have thought. But That's a good assessment. There, there I mean, it's are good songs on this. Yeah, it's basically, yeah, no, actually that's a good point. It could be like a album pressure, like Maynard, you're the star of Tool. Make a solo album, call it something else if you want, like Foo, Dave Grohl with Foo Fighters, like call it a band if you really want. Just do a bunch of covers, like do something, put something out there. Like we're waiting on the other guys and it's just, it's getting really annoying. So yeah, it could work in that way. But even then it's like, cool, Maynard put out a solo record with a bunch of covers. Like it might work, but I mean, man, Merida Norms and 13th Step are like, I kind of compare it to like really good drama movies that like you're so embraced in the music, like you're taken away. And after mm-hmm. I, I left Maynard's uh, winery, I played 13th Step on the drive 
home, like in the dark and in, the, in uh, Arizona, I'm like, man, I can, there's nothing else I'm thinking about except for this music right now with Josh yeah. Freeze's like amazing drum work and everything. It's like, it's uh, it's like tool, right? It's very like, it gets all your senses. Well, like, they, yeah, yeah. And they have, they have some cool artists in that band. James Eha was in it. Mm-hmm. Um, Billy Howard L also really cool. Yeah. Those are was the guitar tech, right? Th- those guys are, uh, very and Josh Freeze, obviously we've talked about his his uh, prowess on the drums in the past with, with Scott Russo way back way way back on episode eleven. So they they made good music together. And this isn't again this isn't to say this is bad. And I think what that, that's what Twan's trying to get at with the if they drop this True. off first, do you think oh man this is terrible? No, I probably am like this is cool. There's some cool songs on here. I'm excited for them to put out their own album. I think is where I would my head would really go. Because um, yep. the the Imagine cover is good, the What's Going On cover is good. Passive, I wish was a tapeworm song. If you go and look on YouTube, there are a couple of versions of the them doing this live, and it's way angrier and it sounds way cooler that way. I think, unfortunately, yep. and it would have been cool to hear it that way instead of hearing it the way that they ended up recording it. But I don't hate that version. And then the uh, the remix of Counting Bodies Like Sheep, which was what. Uh, and a song from from 13th step they they remixed yep. and that that's a kind of electro electronic almost and it's got some funkiness to it there's some good stuff on there it's just not front to back i do the more i think about it i do think there is that handicap going on like like you said you you maybe wouldn't be as down on it if those first two albums didn't exist and the reason i'm doubling down on that is like if you listen to murder noms that's not an album that they just went into the studio and busted out that's years it had to have been yeah. years in the making because it's just you don't you just don't come up with that on the spot and that's the thing is like if you look at the timeline so murder noms comes out in 2000 and then 13 step 2003 and then emotives rate right back in 2004 and eat the elephant was what just a couple of years ago fairly, maybe? fairly recent yeah 18 maybe so there's no excuse for that <laughs> no yeah. and Go listen to Three Libras and tell me that isn't. I mean, that's a, that might be a top five all time song for me. I just, yeah, absolutely slays me that song. It's just so good. That's like a brings bring tears to your eyes type melodic masterpiece. Like, oh my god, Maynard's like got one of the most incredible voices in music history type thing. One thing I got to bring up is you know Perfect Circle. It's not really showcased that much, but it's at the end of the day, it's a super group. You know, you think about the band members mm-hmm. in here. Yep. Tim Alexander, Josh Freeze, Danny Loner, Paz, Lachanton, yeah. Troy. Giordi Troy White. was in a failure. Yep, yep Troy. Yeah, and they covered a failure yeah. song on 13th Step. Yeah. Yep. The Nurse Who Loved now Me. We, great, great song. And now he's in Queens of the Stone Age. But to your point, uh, Anthony, these riffs from Billy Howardale, like he was a guitar tech for Tool, I believe. I'm doing this by memory, so I could be wrong. So from my recollection from like the nerdery pre-podcast, just geeking out, and that's why we did this, is he was like putting it, putting music together as a hobby because he's an artist himself. And eventually like brought it to Maynard, like, hey, what do you think of this music? And Maynard is like, I think it's good. And he's like, cool, I'm looking for a singer. And eventually obviously came full circle and was like, Maynard's like, oh, I'll do it. And that's why it came to well, came to be. And then so. Billy Howardell put out his own record. What was the name of that band? Ashes Divide, right? Ashes yep, Divide. Exactly. Yeah. And and then Maynard taught Billy how to sing because Billy was very like, I don't know if I can do this. And exactly. They, yeah. So it kind of came full circle there. Perfect circle. Yeah. I wonder what it would have been like to be a, a, a tech for Tool. Yeah, I don't know. You're like setting up Danny Carey's drums. And you're like, oh man, I, this is too far away. He's not going to be able to reach that. No, he'll be able to reach it. <laughs> the guy is a monster. <laughs> Got to so. be on time though, right? <laughs> yeah, especially yes. with that setup. Jesus. Oh, so much stuff. So much stuff to put together. <laughs> In precise locations, measurements. But yeah, I think we can all agree that a perfect circle is an amazing band. And this album, I mean, who knows? I think all our assessments are right on cue. And I think maybe, maybe, who knows, you brought this up before, Twan. This might have been a a way to satisfy a deal, I feel like. I mean, it just didn't seem like it felt the same crescendo of their first two albums were such masterpieces. Like, how do you just put out a essentially a covers album when you could just keep that same cadence of amazing masterpiece music, but even if it was written prior, at least instrumentally. So 